Welcome to Getting Started in Library Publishing. My name is Jane, and in this video we will discuss legal agreements for your library publishing program. Please note that some of the material in this presentation is taken directly from Module 4, Unit 2. Before we begin, here are two things we will be looking at in this video. First will be a short introduction on what legal agreements for your library publishing program are and why you need them. Following will be a breakdown of some of the major types of legal agreements. In Units 3 through 6 of this module, we will examine each type of agreement in more detail and look at their application in your library publishing program. So what are legal agreements? While legal agreements can vary depending on the purpose of the publishing agreement, they are generally agreements that provide details on services and responsibilities and ensure all parties involved agree to a set of terms for a project plan. Ideally, terms are flexible as project plans can evolve, change, or grow. In addition, a legal agreement ensures that all parties are protected should any part of the agreement not be upheld. There are four standard types of legal agreements we will discuss, stemming from the most common types of publications for library publishers. Monographs, journals, independent digital publications, and campus publications. We will explore each license in more detail on the next several slides. The first agreement we'll discuss is the monograph publishing agreement. The people involved in this agreement includes the library publisher, who writes the agreement, and the author of the monograph, who signs the agreement. If there are multiple authors involved, there can be separate clauses in the agreement, or entirely separate agreements for each author. The library publisher will need to communicate with at least one author, called a corresponding author, who may be the editor in the case of edited volumes. Other authors are known as contributing authors, and all materials involved in the agreement, such as illustrations and recordings, are referred to as work. Now let's move on to the contents of this agreement. Conditions of publication includes any requirements that the work be made open access or be licensed under Creative Commons. For example, a list of choices for licenses can be provided. The library publishing unit should be ready to assist the author in their decision. Copyright of the work includes a license where the authors can assign necessary rights to the publisher. For most library publishers, this is a non-exclusive license instead of a full copyright transfer. For more details, see Unit 1 of this module. Author warranties and indemnities includes the author's warrant that they own the copyright for all parts of the publication, or that they've obtained permission from the copyright owner to include any third-party material such as images. The corresponding author should warrant not to include any work from a contributing author that they believe or has reason to believe infringes on the rights of anyone else. This would also be the place for a clause asking the author to waive liability against the publisher if appropriate. Delivery and preparation of the work includes copy editing and page proofs and publication deadlines either here or in another document incorporated by reference, such as the developing timeline. The second type of legal agreement we'll be discussing is the Journal Master Services Agreement. A Master Services Agreement for Journals, or MSA, is a governing agreement between you and the editors or sponsoring society of a journal to host and disseminate their journal through the publishing platform or printer, or both. The terms you see on this slide are just some examples of terms you may want to define within your agreement, with basic terms like journal, service, and launch date, to technical terms such as migration, patches, and server. Depending on the services provided and the expectation of library administration and general counsel, your MSA may include some of the components on the following slide. The description of service provided to the journal is an essential section that indicates the library publishing unit's responsibilities. The requirements of the journal partnering with the library publishing unit is a section where the requirements of the journal partner are listed. A couple of examples are, will they need to comply with all deadlines in a timely fashion? or will they be responsible for migrating any contents to a new website if a new site is created? The duration of services and terms of governing termination of service explicitly defines how long the library will provide services to the journal, as either a set time frame or as indefinite with a process for either side to dissolve the agreement. It should include a timeline for notice and whether the library will continue to make the content available. You may also want to include information about how long the agreement can be in effect before publication of the journal begins. For more details, look into Journal Master Services Agreements in Module 4, Unit 2. A third type of legal agreement is the Journal Author Agreement. 
This agreement is between the author of the article and the journal. The details will vary depending on the journal's policies and the role of the library in publishing the journal. Ideally, the library will have a signed author agreement on file for every journal article. Having this documentation not only ensures that the library has the rights it needs to publish, but can also help resolve any takedown requests and other rights-related issues. However it is managed, the library will most likely want to be involved in drafting the agreement itself, to ensure that it is legally valid, contains the necessary provisions, and aligns with the publishing unit's copyright and other policies. The agreement should contain, at minimum, a non-exclusive license from the copyright holder, in this case the author, giving the library the rights it needs to publish, distribute, and preserve the work. A Creative Commons license, if it's in use by the journal and a warranty that the work is original and does not infringe copyright. Finally, a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, is an agreement frequently employed when the library publishing unit is providing a publishing service to another unit within the university. An MOU is less formal than an author agreement or journal services agreement, and is used in cases where everyone involved is at the same institution, which cannot enter into a contract with itself. It may contain many of the same terms as a regular service agreement, though, since it is an internal agreement, there may be particular local campus policies, rules, and restrictions that you must abide by in providing services to another unit in your organization. The Guide to Memorandum of Understanding Negotiation and Development, developed by the U.S. Department of Health and Services, provides a good outline of general MOU development. Thank you for watching this video on legal agreements for library publishing.